This Gamescom edition of GameScoop is presented by Hitman Agent 47 in theaters August 21st. What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week, Justin Davis, Scoop. Marty Sleva, Hello. Jared Petty. Howdy. Got a great show for you guys this week. Uh, last week, I was in uh, this place called Germany. Deutschland. Yep, Deutschland, the land of the Deutsches. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Went there for this uh, little show called Gamescom, mm -hmm. and now I'm ready to report back Ooh. on what I saw. Tell us all about it. Expound. Yeah. Here we go. We're going to talk about the best games I saw at Gamescom and some... Uh, the best news announcements, the Ooh. most surprising announcements. Ooh. I think these are the gamey, the Damey Gamies here. The old Damey Gamies. The Damey Awards. <laughs> Let's start, uh, so like, uh, Sony sat this one out. Yeah. Sort of like gave the spotlight uh, to mm -hmm. Microsoft. And yeah. that's, I thought they had a really strong showing. Yeah, Microsoft really sort of took that opportunity and, and hit it off real hard right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, they did. It's really interesting. It's interesting to see the gamesmanship going on because people think Sony's going to have a lot to say later this year. Mm -hmm. It's like they gave, they ceded ground to Microsoft only to hopefully, you know, not hopefully, but, you know, to keep things interesting, they'll probably gobble some of it back later. Yeah, at the uh, Paris Games Week, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. And, they're, and if they do another Sony experience right. or... So, uh, they announced finally a release date for Quantum Break. Mm -hmm. Showed some more footage of this and announced the uh, actors that are going to be yeah. involved in the game and the TV show. Yep. Remember, this is sort of a, a new multimedia experience. Yeah, it's cool. I like the idea that the TV show is following the bad guys, right? It's mm -hmm. sort of like highlighting yeah. the little finger from... Uh, I almost said Littlefoot. That was Land of Four Times. <laughs> yeah. Little from Game I would of play that game. Yeah. I wish Littlefoot. Telltale yeah. Presents. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Land of Four Times. This game looks awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... I think so. Sean Ashmore is, is our is our lead, and his brother has some sort of powers, but his brother ends up getting killed, and now uh, he absorbs his brother's time manipulation powers. Yeah. So it's like a third third person action game where you have time mani manipulation powers. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Ashmore, uh, Iceman from the X Men, yep. plays our hero here, and then uh, the villain is Littlefinger from mm -hmm. uh, uh, Game of Thrones. Yep. He was also the mayor in The Wire, and then oh, uh, right. oh yeah, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Aiden Gillen, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, another actor from... Uh, oh, so Dom Dominic Monaghan yep. is just in the game. He's not in the show. And then oh. that guy... Oh, Lance Reddick. Yeah, Lance oh, Reddick yeah. from uh, Lost. And yeah. The Wire. And Fringe. Also and The, the wire. wire. Yeah. Oh, is, this wow. just a, is this just also, in The Wire? Also, I think The Bellhop in John Wick. Yeah. Oh, really? He has The, he has the Bellhop in John Wick. <laughs> oh, I did not get that movie. Yeah. You didn't get it? I didn't get it. I, everybody kept telling it me how to do it. about a dude who just kills everything. I know. Yeah. I was like, people were like, oh, this is so good. And I was like, no, yeah. it's kind of John I just Morgan. thought it was a fun John action Wick's movie. great. Yeah. I, I, liked, I wanted to like John Wick. Doesn't like John Wick. Like doesn't like Panjo Kazooie. Doesn't, doesn't like, like voice doesn't acting. Doesn't like Game of Thrones doesn't anymore. Like Game of Thrones but you know, anymore. I, I like lots of other things. <laughs> you like Tandy <laughs> Games? <laughs> I do like Tandy <laughs> Games. I like Tandy Games a lot. I like Hard Boiled. Quantum Break is out April 5th next year. So we finally have... A release date yeah. on that one. Damon, uh, what do you think of this whole like TV show crossover thing? Like uh, the last time I saw a game try to do this was with Defiance, where you had a oh, yeah. pretty midland TV show and a terrible video game side by mm -hmm. side. Now, obviously, this is it looks like a, a whole new degree of production is going into this game product. What do you think they're going to have to do right to make this work as a television program? Well, so what I wonder, what I wonder is, you know, uh, TV, well, anything. Move, good movies and good TV shows have good directors. Mm -hmm. So it's like, who did they get to direct this? They got sure. they got good talent. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. who's directing yeah. this yeah. live action sequence? What, I think yeah. that's what, important. What network is it on? It's no. So that's okay. the thing. It's all on the game disc. Ooh. Oh. It's not. It's, it's not yeah. something you watch on TV. Yeah. So you play a level of the game. It unlocks an episode of the show, and the episode's like 22 minutes. Yeah. Like a oh. Typical like 30 minute show. Yeah, weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is weird. You're playing just... the game, and then you watch the show with the bad guys. Play the game, watch yeah. the bad guys. And we're getting, we're getting more of that uh, later on. Like, Telltale is doing that super show thing that we're not 100% sure what that is, but it seems like it's a yeah. game along with a TV show, and everything's weird. And now, is it fair to speculate that eventually we're going to see this on one of the digital download platforms as something we can watch streaming? I mean, on Netflix or Hulu or something like that? I mean, Dibital. like on Netflix? Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, eventually Dibital be able downloads. to watch the show. I don't know, see, now. well, it's hard to know. It's well, probably it, not made, it's not made to be cut together. Yeah, I, I, right. I imagine, Without maybe having, the show doesn't make any sense unless you've played so those see, Like, it picks up right oh. where your level ends or something like that, and it won't even be standalone, or maybe it will be standalone. Like, but don't knows? they just call that a Metal Gear cutscene at that point? I mean, if it's just yeah, a really long... What? Yeah, but I mean, so are FMV game cutscenes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's like time Red will, Alert at that point. Time will tell. And yeah, yeah but it's Red Alert with Lance Reddick. Oh, hey, yeah. Red Alert had George Takei. That, that was it did have George. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I guess we'll find out April 5th. Yeah. The game looks really cool. This is another game. Really cool. This is a game that I was a little bit cool on when it was revealed, but the more they show off, the more uh, impressed. The I am. developer has a great pedigree. Yeah. Alan mm -hmm. Wake and Alan Max, Wake, Payne. Max Payne. I'm really excited about this. Totes. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft also showed us Crackdown for yeah. the first time in over a year. Yeah. <laughs> this one is also looking loudy, really loudy. Cool. Look at all these buildings blowing up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so their big thing they were showing off is that the multiplayer, in the multiplayer mode, the entire city can be destroyed. Yep. Oh, so and and going, will be. Yeah, yeah, and will be. And they're using the cloud to compute all this extra destruction. Yeah. Which I so, thought, I'm, I'm, I'm still, still skeptical as hell, but they actually showed it off. Like, they showed a version yeah. of, like, here's what it looks like if you're offline and not using mm -hmm. the cloud, and here's what it looks like if you are online and you yeah. have, you know, this processing power being the sort of streamed like the, to your three. The destruction GX1. with the cloud is just, like, stupidly impressive. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. Um, Bring down yeah. entire buildings. I mean, it has to, you know, it's confusing, like, what if I'm on Wi-Fi? Is the destruction not going to be as cool as if I'm, you know, <laughs> like, plugged in? Or what if I'm yeah. in a place well, with yeah, crap? Yeah, what if my internet goes out or there's a very real uh, latency concern there yeah. for sure if they're streaming you know a significant amount of data to your Xbox one from some yeah. data center somewhere else in the world yeah will you get better performance based on your physical location if you have a lower ping to the server yeah well like, certain people like there's certain just neighborhoods in San Francisco like if they're between yeah. two hills like Wi-Fi is just super spotty there. Sure. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah and that's that's always the issue with with remote computing is your pipeline and your bandwidth that you're able to get in I'm really interested in seeing this kind of red faction gorilla on a grand scale thing happen mm -hmm. I also love the fact that uh, we saw a lot of things in the preview and we broke down where you see people inside the buildings and it looks like you're going to be able to, to move inside a lot of these structures. Mm -hmm. They look pretty bare bones within but there's still all kinds of all kinds of new tactical options that presents along with a destructible environment. Oh, so I think it's really exciting. Up. I love this. You know what else I saw in this uh, trailer? What did you see, buddy? Orbs. Orbs. So yeah. many orbs. orbs. Yeah. Yeah. What, if, yeah. what if, if there's an orb in a building or if there's an orb at the top of a building and you blow up the building, is that is orb he, just hanging out up there? Well, but yeah. see, that, that destruction is, is almost isn't player. in the yeah. single player mm -hmm. mode. Uh, because they have a story they're telling if you destroyed the city, you wouldn't be able to tell. I love the idea that you destroyed <laughs> buildings. Like, well, you killed the You're, boss. Good yeah. job, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the credits. <laughs> We're proud of you. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. Um, it actually reminds me of an idea I've had for a game mm -hmm. for a long time. So I've had this idea, and then I think they're actually making the game. Kind of, I had in my mind. I thought it'd be, be cool to have a moderate-sized city, say like San Francisco, and the point of the game is just to level the entire city. Okay, okay. fine. So you, you're turned loose in the city and like do whatever you need to Big do fan. to destroy the city in as short amount of time as possible. I love mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. So like, I think I think they must have yeah. like been tapping my my sure. dreams. That's the so obvious they, conclusion. Your yeah. ideas went to the cloud. Yeah. Well, yeah. And they grabbed them. I gotta stop sending my ideas. <laughs> In this game, were you a off. giant monster, a Godzilla, like on your T-shirt? No, you're just, I mean, no, you're just a, a, a human. Oh, okay. Get to a gun store and start, get some explosives. Yeah, get a dump truck out. and just drive through. Start bringing some buildings yeah. down. That sounds fun. I like that. That'd be good. It's like Blast Corp. Still like to play that game. Uh, I finally got to play Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise. Rise. Tomb Raider Rise. Uh, and I finally actually got to raid a tomb. Oh, <laughs> you raided the heck That's out real? Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. a really good article, by the way. Thank really you. Enjoyed that. It's been a long time since I'd written a preview, <laughs> so I'm glad that you know, it's really well okay. done. Yeah. People it's like, like riding a bike, you know? Yeah. You never, some, you're going to be 20 years from Premium now, and you're call that a retirement. David. When, they, when they reboot <laughs> Tomb Raider again, yeah. <laughs> you're telling me that again. Uh, What's so yeah. Think? Uh, super fun. Yeah. This is, uh, she, you know, the area I played in, she's in Syria. Mm -hmm. She's uh, been led there. She has these voice recordings from her father, and they <coughs> lead her to Syria to find this tomb. And uh, I played, some, you know, there's a bunch of puzzles, a bunch yeah. of physics-based water puzzles, mm -hmm. just like in the first game. And uh, there's a new mechanic where you, she can actually learn foreign languages. Like, you'll encounter Greek etchings on the wall, and she can't read them, but if you examine nearby objects, she's like, she learns Greek somehow. <laughs> oh, wow. You can level up her, her, her language I'm proficiency. Totally it took me two years And ago then she can read the Greek. Greek, and it'll point her to, like, where her treasure is. I like that. I like that. I, I, that. I also like that, like, I mean, we know, like, the combat's going to be cool and everything, yeah, but I like, I like that the there's show. this stuff, too. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm hoping that the game is like a cool mix that like yeah. anytime you might start getting sick of one element, it'll throw you into it, the other. It definitely seems like they're emphasizing puzzles in this one. I'm sure you're going to talk yeah. about Deus Ex later. Like that game's doing the opposite where they really nailed the stealth and hacking trees mm -hmm. so they're bolstering the combat. Yeah. And the first Tomb Raider really, really nailed the combat and so now they're kind of bolstering the yeah. puzzles. Yeah, um, big fan. Oh, yeah. it looks pretty. I'm also glad that it's uh, like real, it's a much different looking setting than uh, mm -hmm. the yeah, sort of all I was the very worried. I was, stuff we've seen. Yeah. I, was, I was worried like you were, I've heard you say this before, yeah. that uh, if that entire game was in some snowy, frigid environment. Um, I don't know how I would have, would have felt about that. Now, I think the glow popping is going to work good because you had that more narrow environment in the first game and the ability to go to all these exotic places. That's part of the appeal of, a, of an Indiana Jones-style adventure movie, which is what Tomb Raider does best when, yeah. it's, when it's shooting on all cylinders. Excuse me, I think it's called an Uncharted-style adventure. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'm good with that. No! no. 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 
<laughs> anyway, I really enjoyed Rise of the Tomb Raider. That one's out November 10th, same day, of course, as Fallout 4. There's, there's, some, there's, some real good, there's some real good Xbox games coming out. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you still think they're going to they're gonna blink? I still think Tomb Raider's going to be delayed. Yeah, that's what I keep saying. I, we're getting real close to that. <laughs> that's true. It's like so. November 9th. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're not doing it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they're not doing it. Uh, we have to see more of Mirror's Edge. Oh, yeah. Catalyst. And uh, I found out, it maybe, tell me if this is news to you guys, they, it, this is a full reboot. This is not yeah, a prequel. We actually got yeah. that, I think, on, in the live show segment. Uh, yeah. They mentioned I, that this is a, they said I reboot, sort I of. I thought this was a, a, a prequel to the yeah. previous I mean, game, but they said, yeah, they're ignoring, like, obviously, it takes, they're, they're, they're telling the origin story of Faith and... Yeah. Ignore. They're not. They're not assuming that the events of the first game are going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Which is very interesting. So, I mean, it's um, kind of. So it's neither. So it's not a reboot in the sense that it's not retelling the same story. Like it right. is a different story, but it's kind of like, well, just look. Like just it's the same character and city, but just the rest, just toss it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. I don't. Even, I don't remember. I think that's the story. fine. Yeah, I, I like that game a lot, but I don't remember the story. No, and this. Yeah, the game looks super pretty. I'm glad again mm -hmm. that they're. Really emphasizing non-combat. Yeah, because every time you got a gun in uh, Mirror's Edge, the game slowed down and got kind of. Well, crappy. you know, in this one, you can't even pick up a gun. Big yeah. fan of that. They're yeah. just big fan of that. Good. Yeah, totally. It looks pretty. Forcing you to thing. just. I hope, I hope you don't spend too animal. much time inside. That was a little bit weird. I mean, I know yeah, it's just the, the gameplay demo. Inside, but yeah. But. Or maybe that's just because it's easier to do indoor environments than outdoor. I, I yeah, know. it's just yeah. a demo they're choosing to show. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not really indifferent than anything else, but I hope it's not too indicative of uh, the finished product. Yeah. I, I, I thought Mirror's Edge was at its best when it let you sort of stretch your wings and really go a little bit crazy yeah. with she the She didn't have wings. She was a human, not a bird. She yeah. was an Icarus. <laughs> That one's early next year. I don't know if there's an exact that, yeah, date. Yeah, February. For, I think February or something. February. Yeah. yeah. Um, man, we already have like a, a rough view yeah. of what the first quarter is like, and it's, yeah. it's huge. And then Q1. we don't even have like one's Uncharted coming out yeah. and stuff like that. Q1 and Q2 are the new Q4. <laughs> Q1 Does that and Q2, mean that? Justin. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, another game I'm, uh, I, was, I was impressed with it at E3, and then uh, I saw it again at uh, Gamescom, and it's, I'm so stoked to play this game. Divinity Original Sin, yeah. oh, the okay. Enhanced Edition. Yep, yep, yep. This is the one that's uh, coming to consoles as well. They just announced a sequel, too. And they just yep. announced yeah. Divinity Original Sin 2. Wait a minute. Yeah. Divinity, uh, what's the opposite of original? Uh, uh, stolen? No, wait, that's yeah, not true. I don't know. I don't know. Plagiarized? Uh, unoriginal. 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 Uh, this is an old school style RPG, Baldur's Gate style, and that they've, uh, they're adapting the controls for, P for PlayStation 4, Xbox One. And I am amazed by how much detail there is in the game and just the options that the player has, yeah. the incredible uh, variety of ways you can approach problem solving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You played uh, the game on PC, right? I played, well, so the one that I was really into was Pillars of Return, oh, which is right, a similar right, yeah. isometric RPG. This yeah. one's a little bit more modern in the sense that uh, it's not pre-rendered backgrounds. It's actually like polygonal, so you can swing the camera around yeah. mm -hmm. and... Uh, it's not sandbox, but it, it's a little bit more open in the sense that, like, you can drag, like, TNT over to a boss and then ignite it and yeah. do damage to it that way. So you have, it's a little bit less canned um, than a game like Pillars, which sure, is sure. much more traditional like Baldur's Gate. There's been kind of a, a resurgence of these games, almost yeah, a renaissance. Great. I mean, Pillars and this. And, Shadowrun. Uh, Shadowrun, Wasteland, Wasteland 2. Uh, it's great. And, uh, Everything old is new The new D&D &D game that's that's coming out, mm -hmm. uh, Storm Yeah, Post, we're going to talk about like, that in a second. Yeah, I'm really glad this is coming to console. Um, oh, oddly, man. I think it'll work. Like I, think, I, I mean, it's you know, you don't have that many skills active at any one time, so I feel like it's it's going to work on a. Yeah. My PC actually played um, uh, Pillars just fine, but it couldn't run uh, Divinity very well. Oh, so I didn't. I, I couldn't. I just. I just don't mm. know if it was an optimization. Yeah, issue there's what, definitely so. a like. Obviously, we had that wealth of RPGs in terms of uh, Dragon Age and Witcher coming out like yeah. six months apart yeah. from each other, but like. There isn't really anything huge on the horizon until maybe like Final mm -hmm. Fantasy comes out. So mm -hmm. this is, you know. I mean, I'm just glad to see, like, they're both huge games, uh, both when I say and both. This is I mean, very, like, I want to point out, this is very different, a different type of RPG than yeah. Dragon Age or yeah, Witcher. Yeah, true, true. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's like uh, Dragon Age is huge, Witcher is huge, and Divinity is also huge, but it's like it, 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 its size comes in a different yeah. vector, I guess, than mm -hmm. a game like The Witcher. Yeah. It's is. immersive in an entirely different way. Yeah. Um, and what yeah. they're doing here is uh, they've got this awesome uh, local cooperative split screen. 
uh, mm. experience that I would have loved to have had when I was a kid with my friends. So you have several members in your party, and then your friend can just jump into yeah. the game at any moment oh, and awesome. take control of one of your characters. I love that. And then if yeah. you guys go apart, it just goes into split screen, yeah. and oh. you can both go off into the world and do whatever you want and complete different missions. I love that. I, I, I used to dream when I was playing Secret of Mana that that would happen. Like, if we got far enough apart, the screen would split, and now it's somebody so would crazy. Like, like, so we're, like, yeah. games. And then, uh, you know, you, you're, you're in a boss fight. When you go into a boss fight, it becomes turn-based, <laughs> and uh, we were, the boss was way OP, so when we were just playing single player, he left, he took one of his characters and like, or he switched to a different character that wasn't in our boss fight, and we went into, <laughs> we went and found the like wizard that had invented this boss and like, F figured out the weak spot of the boss by talking to the wizard, and That's then we're so able good. to jump back into the boss fight and beat him. Yeah, That's awesome. great. I love that. I love that. We, uh, Divinity is a big Kickstarter success story. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, the, the sequel is launching on Kickstarter later this month. Yep. Uh, the Enhanced Edition is out on PC and console in October, I believe. So that was really cool. And then, Jared, you mentioned Sword Coast Legends. Mm -hmm. This is another uh, sort of old school style top down RPG that looks really cool. This is a Dungeons and Dragons game. Right, yeah. This is a licensed DD product. It's got some really neat uh, uh, multiplayer stuff they've showed off where people are going to have the ability to create their own quests uh, and share those out with others. But there's also just looking at what goes on in, in the single player game. Play. It's pretty amazing. I, I saw some demo work on this, and there, it's just a really neat Baldur's Gate style game. I, I don't know how it's going to come together, but everything I've seen in preview has been very exciting. Well, the hook here is that one player gets to be dungeon master. Right. Yeah. It actually plans out the yeah. dungeon and it can even interact with it while you're playing. And as a matter of fact, that watching that dynamic interaction is what makes this really exciting because the DM can just sit there and plan insidious things and then improvise as the yeah. players solve yeah. the puzzle. Like, oh, they figured that out. Well, let me drop this on them. But at the same time, there's also a lot of incentive to provide positive feedback for the players. It's not mm -hmm. just about trolling them. It's about creating an experience that's challenging but also uh, exciting and enjoyable for them and the rewards for doing kind of both those things. Mm -hmm. Very cool. The last time I saw Sword Course Legends, it wasn't clear to me. I actually don't know if they've answered this question since about how much is it a video game and how much is it a set of digital tools for mm -hmm. you know playing a game of D&D sure. because you know you do have that dungeon master sort of pulling the strings and do they just have a bunch of tools at their disposal to sort of send their party through or is it going to feel you know more Baldur's Gate feel more traditional and I mm -hmm. it was it was a little bit unclear um, so I don't know it I mean, seems to me that the emphasis is really on DMs creating scenarios for you to play yeah, I don't and know you can about that you can part, create them. Uh, you can create your scenario offline. You know, pre-build it and then just hand it over for people. Upload it for other people yeah, to download. Cool and play. If they have really nice like sharing tools. Yeah. Um, you know, to sort and view. You know, uh, quests of a different levels and different. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, difficulty levels. Yeah, it's um, always important for user-created content is to have an ability to find the good stuff. But uh, I think they've talked about. Um, it's been a little while since I've read about this and looked at it, but if I remember right, there's going to be some incentives also for, you know, say, ranking good DMs. Or, sure. or exactly, yeah. Good, yeah. Uh, uh, players can rank your levels, rank you as a, as a DM. So if you're just oh, griefing them all the time and it's yeah, not fun, yeah. then they'll give you a poor ranking. Yeah, sounds great. That one's also coming to consoles later this year. Uh, a game I'm cautiously optimistic about is Scalebound. Because uh, I think I like a lot of what this game is doing, and I'm a big fan, of course, of Kaiju yeah, and yeah. Giant Monsters. Yeah. Yeah. So that part of it I like. I'm not crazy about our character that we play. Yeah. I think he's, Drew? he's yeah. a little, I don't know. He, he, might, he reminds me of the dude from No More Heroes, where it's yeah. like, you know, it's like, oh, he's annoying. But Travis Touchdown? Travis Touchdown. But, yeah. uh, but he was meant to be that way, at least. Yeah, yeah uh, but I don't know, this looks cool. I like yeah, I like cool. the look of the game. I like the colorful nature of it. Uh, everything they've said about the, the your, your dragon buddy, your monster buddies, uh, just seems like really impressive in terms of like that AI, like how well, yeah. like you can sort of try to have it act one way, but it is this like, you know, real AI that will act the way, I was about to say act the way a real dragon would. <laughs> Sounds like the original working title for this game was Dragon Buddies. Yeah. Oh, really? Dragon oh, Buddies. Dragon Buddies. Is, is there any indication at all that a friend would be able to jump in and control the dragon? Like, well, like cooperative. I don't my... think the dragon. There is a yeah. four-player cooperative right. mode, but I think yeah. everyone's going to have their own dragon. That's, yeah, I, I've, yeah. I've, I've heard about that. I was just like, what, what, I want to team up with a partner. I want my partner to be the dragon and me to be a little dragony guy and work yeah. together that way. Yeah, I, I mean, it really, uh, Marty's exactly right that what's going to make or break this game is how that interaction with the dragon yeah. feels. And is he just going to be able to... They actually talk about this a lot in Halo 5 as well. You don't want your <coughs> AI-controlled buddy to be too powerful and just wreck everything without yeah. your help, mm -hmm. yeah. but you also don't want them to feel useless or weak, and that balancing act is really challenging, I have to imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, Platinum has a you know pretty great track record. Like, if you've... Yeah, you know, everything, they, I mean, the, the action game track worked record. It's incredible, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm... This makes me... Seeing uh, Drew as a little dude and then seeing a bunch of dragons fight... Yeah. Uh, Makes me just want a Pokemon game like that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I, wanna, I want my yeah. dragon buddy to be a Charizard. Oh, 
Oh, it's, it's Norlax. That's that sleepy Snorlax. one. Pokebounce. I'm, I'm still holding out for the Pokemon MMO. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh. Why doesn't that happen? So this could be really cool. I don't know. Uh, I, this is their first. This is Platinum's first action RPG, and yeah. I, I think pretty much any type of game is made better by adding RPG elements. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it could be really cool. It's yeah. a very, very pretty game. Yeah. Which yeah. It's kind of a trite thing to say. Cause like, what's not? What like yeah. what AAA games aren't very pretty yeah. anymore? But I mean, I I don't know what other people expected. I didn't expect it to be that gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But keep checking back all month because it's our IGN first. That's true. A lot of Ooh. new stuff coming. That's true. Boom. Uh, so those are games that caught my eye. You mentioned um, uh, Deus Ex. I think that game looks cool, but they weren't really showing much new yeah. at the yeah. show. Yeah. That's yeah, the only the reason why. They saw at E3. Yeah, they, yeah, they showed the same level they showed at E3, just approaching it in a more stealthy way. So yeah. Yeah. that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the, the announcement I was most excited about from the show was Halo Wars 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that's that came very cool. Uh, left field. Yeah. Like, we didn't yeah. really uh, I mean, expect it. It's like Creative Assembly this time. The first game was very good, Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. but pro I, I don't know how well it sold. I don't think it sold. Well, I have a theory that Halo Wars is one of those games that a lot a lot of people are like, yeah, I loved Halo Wars, and they thought they were the only one. But mm -hmm. it turns out there's just people all over the place that. It was like a Ubisoft press conference. The camera zooms out, and it turns out everyone. Well, everyone <laughs> loved Halo Wars. <laughs> well, Halo Wars, War like uh, uh, RTS on console, is really, really hard mm -hmm. to do, and it might be the best one. Yeah. Like I was thinking about it, I'm like, what really yeah. nailed it better than yeah. that? Very, very few things. I mean, it, Halo mm -hmm. Wars takes into account the controls, which are the big, you know, obstacle with uh, with playing on a home console, and also the size and number of units you can select at a time. A lot of people just try to shoehorn a PC RTS with mouse controls mm -hmm. onto a television, it doesn't work. Halo Wars approached that in some very smart ways before. I think they'll be even smarter about it this time with the second time around. But yeah, I mean, other than Halo Wars and something like Herzog's Vi, I, I can't think of any other places where... Star Fox 64, or no, Star Fox, Starcraft 64. <laughs> Starcraft 64. That's Actually, Starcraft, did you Starcraft think 64 is really good. No, I thought it was, that was the yeah. first time I played Starcraft. It, it's it's really, really good. Isn't it, there an Ogre Battle RTS on N64? Yeah. Am I making that Ogre up? Battle oh, there's 64. a lot of RTSs. And the Starcraft 64 RTS? ones. That's how I remember it, but maybe yeah, I'm wrong. No, yeah. it's it's I feel like it anyway. has RTS elements. It's content rich. I think Pikmin does it better than almost anybody. Pikmin well. is really an RTS game that's been adapted to console. Pikmin's really good. That's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for Halo Wars 2. Sad and Ensemble's not doing it, but uh, Creative Assembly, the Total War developers have a mm -hmm. fantastic Do you think it's going to be real spooky, like Alien Isolation? I do not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought there were two very <laughs> surprising announcements from the show. One was that Nolan North is replaced, replacing Peter Dinklage in Destiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit... Is that scandalous? I mean, no, it's I only mean, because when... When Destiny was released, everyone was like, "God, Dinklage's VO is garbage." Yep, it was. It was really bad. Yeah, it's uh, they Bungie's handling it in a very diplomatic way, saying yeah. like, "Listen, like this is a very important character going forward, and this Peter Dinklage is obviously a, has Game of Thrones and yeah. things like Pixels, Pixels, so, <laughs> Pixels Two, <laughs> Pixels Two. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't think we're gonna get a Pixels Two. <laughs> um, yeah, and so they're like, well, Nolan North is probably, you know, in terms of video game, much easier to get for yeah. future things. They're positioning mm -hmm. it very much as an availability. Yeah. Like, we need a yeah. lot of Ghost VO and but Nolan North it does is this insane day in, day that, out. like, once you download this update, is this stuff, is, is Peter Dinklage's Destiny yeah. going to become a thing that's, like, hard to find? Yeah. Like, don't, don't update yeah. your Destiny if you want Dinklage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have a vid we have a, a video on IGN, the original uh, that wizard came to the moon. I think we preserved that for posterity way back during the alpha. Uh, it does. It's still a, have that, but oh, go ahead, Justin. No, go ahead. Uh, but you, you know, actors give this bad performances sometimes. Even great actors. I mean, nobody's going to argue Peter Dinklage can't act. He's he's just superb. But yeah. that's a pretty terrible voice performance. In yeah, Destiny. I mean, it just sounds like he was sleepwalking his way through it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I have a personal interest. I've been meaning to write a feature about this for a long time, just about the preservation of games. And it's interesting mm -hmm. that there's this thing that millions of people played that's just going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. just weird to me. Like, yeah. it kind of weirds me out that, like, I, I, it doesn't necessarily make me sad. Like, I don't think it's bad. I can't quite put my finger on why it feels weird. I guess it's like, so when George Lucas tinkers with Star Wars, yeah. you can still get and find, like, you still have your tape. You can't mess with that. Yeah. But now if you have the saying. Destiny disc, they can mess with that. It's like replacing the voice of Snake in Metal Gear Solid yeah, totally. with Kiefer Sutherland. But the old games are still right. yeah, yeah, using yeah. the old voice actor, but like, now it's just yeah. like... Another example you is yeah. you won't be able to play Destiny with Peter Dinklage. Yeah. When they released uh, World of Warcraft uh, Cataclysm, or Cataclysm, as it's called <laughs> in some circles, um, <laughs> The like the old the original vanilla World of Warcraft was gone. Like you, mm -hmm. it's completely gone, and that's like what so many people spent a thousand hours in. And like it just feels like that. 
<clears throat> there doesn't seem to be any interest in preserving games in the way that there's an interest in preserving film or uh, it's, you know, it's, other media. Yeah, it's not nearly as widespread. No, there are groups right now uh, fighting for the right to yeah. uh, do the necessary mods so that they can do things like preserve MMOs or games that are not really MMO, games that are server dependent in general mm -hmm. uh, that have gone offline by by creating emulated or simulated servers. Yeah. But sometimes the modifications you have to do to make that happen are illegal. Technically uh, illegal. Yeah, yeah. Right. So so there are groups right now fighting for those rights. I, I think that I think that the interest is there. But the message isn't out. It's not widespread. Yeah. Um, so it needs the support of viewers like you. Is one of those um, groups ISIS? Uh, yeah. No, one of those groups is not. But, oh, yeah. um, I'm not sure who ISIS is. I think the EFF is helping out with one of the cases, uh, if I WWE. remember. Right. There's some other things I read about. No, this FIFA. The other <laughs> announcement that <laughs> surprised me from the show was that uh, Tony Hawk 5 switched up the art style. Very, like, that game comes out pretty soon. Yeah. It comes out like a month. Next month? Yeah. yeah. Pulling a Borderlands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually. <laughs> so so they switched to this cult, to a uh, cell shaded art style. I'm sorry to say I don't have a very strong feeling about that game. Yeah. And uh, one of the things, you know, when we first saw it, one of the uh, one of the things I heard people saying was that it didn't look very good. Yeah. So the developer must have just been like, "This, this is their way of fixing the graphics. Yeah. Just I make mean, it unreal, make it cartoonish." I'm, yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to go hands on with it. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge fan of Tony Hawk, especially one through four. Uh, yep. And so I'm curious. Uh, I think I'm on the review, and so like, mm. if it plays well, I can get over yeah. any sure. visual. I, th I mean, to be fair, I do think this new style looks better than it did I agree. before. Yeah, I so. agree. It looks, I mean, the problem, as of now, again, I haven't played it either, so maybe when it's in your hands it'll feel better, but it looks slow. Like, Tony Hawk 1 through 4 were not slow. They were no. pretty fast-playing yeah. games, and this just looks kind of slow. So slow, I slow Tony Hawk. I'm in uh, <laughs> <laughs> My only interest is whether I can play as Wolverine and Darth Maul. Um, yeah. Everything else is secondary. Almost certainly not. Uh, Definitely not Darth Maul. Not Darth Maul, but out. maybe, I think you can play as Captain Phasma now. Oh, yeah. Captain Phasma, there we go, okay. <laughs> I'm going to do some Gwendolyn Christie skateboard, and I'm yeah, good with exactly. that. Yeah, there's an article. Uh, that she have a weird arm? You know what, never mind. Uh, she has weird hands. Okay. Uh, yeah, she has strange hands. That's They're sexist. Huh? <laughs> uh, the most vague announcement of the show was that Final Fantasy XV <coughs> is going to be borrowing some sort of tech from Just Cause 3. Yeah, and it may or may not be the tech that, in order for them to implement airships into the game, possibly after the game is released, so they, they might have post-release yeah. airships. <laughs> So, Post release airships. It's yeah. my second favorite kind of airship. Yeah. Both these games are Square Enix games. Yeah. So, yeah. Somehow, uh, is it Tabata San from yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Final Fantasy 15? He saw something he liked in Just Cause 3 and wants to use it in yeah. Final Fantasy 15. He told me it might have something to do with the uh, verticality of yeah, like, yeah. Maybe it's going to become a physics-based grappler. They're just going to drop all the RPG mechanics. It's all going to be about uh, picking up chocobos and they swimming around. They wanted to tell us this, but then that's all that they said. That, yeah. That's Can all you imagine this time. what if Rico was in, what if you could play a game in another game? Like you were Rico in Just Cause, but you're in the world of Final Fantasy XV. Oh, I'd love that. Do you like That'd that? That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Awesome. Or like, I want to climb that big summon guy. Flip it around yeah. the other guy, be the Final Fantasy XV guy have in those, Just Cause. Have be yeah. those four boys who go camping and kiss each other and yeah. go There's, on the Just Cause island. The kissing is implied. Marty. Yeah. It's no. not explicit. Not in here. It's not. <laughs> they do wake up with fabulous hair from that Coleman tent. Every, yeah. every morning, just perfect hair. Yeah. And it is literally a Coleman tent. Yes. Yeah. It's insane. I love that. <laughs> every, all their camping gear is Coleman branded. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really And Coleman makes good stuff. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap Sponsored up. Of, by Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap up of Gamescom 2015. Pretty good show this year. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, pretty, pretty. Pretty good lineup pretty good. of yeah. games this year. Let's check in with the listener. Hey, listeners. Hi. What's listeners, up, listeners, remember you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com, just like Dave Murphy did. Good job, Dave. Hi, Dave. Good old DM. Speaking of Gamescom and game trade shows, do you think there will ever be a public games trade show that surpasses E3 in scale or importance? Do you think this would cause a change in E3 and its industry-only policies? So he didn't say U.S., so I'm going to say yes, and it's called Gamescom. That's what I'm going to say. What, is he, what, do you, what does he mean by scale and importance? I mean, Gamescom Dave, has, what do you mean by this? Yeah, Gamescom Dave, is like f if more Murphy's than four real times life. as big as, as E3. Yeah, I mean, in Gamescom. terms of... Yeah. Yeah, again, it's called Gamescom. Like yeah. 350,000 <laughs> people go to Gamescom. That is E3 insane. is like 50,000. Yeah. So... Um, but now, I would argue that the game announcements are bigger at E3. Yeah, so, Gamescom has sure. been growing, though, definitely. Like, I mean, since I've been in the industry yeah, in the sure. last five years or so, like, Gamescom has continued to become more and more important. Yep. Um, in terms of stateside stuff, there's nothing close yet mm -hmm. to E3. To E3. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's stuff getting close attendance-wise, but that's I mean, because they're open to public. It's kind of a cheat. Yeah, yeah PAX yeah. has more people than, yeah. uh, than E3 does. But they don't do as big of an announcement. No, not at all. Yeah. So, and Sony's decision not to go to Gamescom this year, I don't know what that bodes for the future, what's going to happen next year. Because having uh, having the big three there is 
you know, one of the most exciting things about E3. Everybody's presenting something really exciting. You've got all three of the hardware manufacturers, and you've got most of the major yeah, software developers. It really is. I mean, it's very it's stuff. very dependent on timing. Um, when I w- w- just started in this industry, E3 was always early May. Um, mm-hmm. And then they pushed it back. It was in July a few times, and now they've sort of settled in the middle of in June. Um, Gamescom is a really, really good time to announce games. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you have your demo ready, you have everything ready to go. E3 can be kind of tough to get it all ready to go by that time. Um, So, I don't know, but E3 can also be a good time to release, like, what's happening in this back half. Like, do pull a a Fallout 4. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's strange that culturally, the fact that, you know, that Americans and Europeans give gifts at Christmas and Japanese give gifts at New Year's, Makes such has such an effect on the cycle of development in all the major markets. Yeah. Uh, well, except that the Japanese console market isn't what it used to be. No, it's Ooh. not. It, it is much less important than it once was. Uh, but it still affects uh, the development cycle for people yeah. like Nintendo in particular. I mean, yeah. they're yeah. very interesting. I mean, Nintendo's a weird one too because E3 is pretty much the only show that they really focus on. Because the rest of the year they just do directs and sort of announce yeah. things on their own schedule, and I sort of see that as a trend going and forward. That yeah, companies they, are going to start doing yeah. that. I mean, in answer to good old DM's question, yeah, I would expect. Well, here's what I think. My prediction is that E3 will be like Gamescom and add a public fourth or fifth day. You think that'll happen? Yeah, mm. I do. I think it'll be press only or you know industry only for the first two to three days, and they'll tack on a couple of public, public days. Public days at Gamescom and Tokyo <laughs> Game Show are terrifying. Yeah, yeah. yeah TGS public days are. It's like a miasma of human beings. Just like just like this still flow. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and I imagine Gamescom is very similar. It sounds that. great. Yeah. It sounds a still flow. <laughs> still yeah. flow. I went to my doctor and said, yeah, I have a still flow. It's a clogged yeah. drain of human beings. It really is. Yeah, just, uh, pretty much. At least everyone's polite in Japan. That helps. So we must have... This is Nathan Jester. Hey, Nathan. He's talking about game collections. Oh. So rare, the Rare Replay. Yeah. Ah. The Orange Box. Yeah. Super Mario All-Stars. Yeah. And All great things. Metroid Prime Trilogy. Yeah. He Ooh. says... Goodness. Which is best? Jesus. Which is most important? What? Which is your favorite? Nope. Of, the, of that list? Yeah. I, that I list. don't even know where to. I don't even know where to start. Best is Mario All Stars because Mario World is one of Mario the greatest World, games. Mario is in All Stars. It's just one, two, three. And it's World. in World. Well, one, one, two, three. World and Lost. Lost. So there's a version of All Stars that doesn't have World. Yeah, the That's original true. version doesn't have World, but then they uh, updated a version. And the view, <laughs> version of World in that collection is slightly different than the version of it World is. that originally shipped with the SNES. And too. one Luigi slides on his stomach. Yeah. Wow. So we looked this up one time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, pound for pound in terms of what has the best games ever made, uh, yeah, I mean, it's all-stars. Like, mm-hmm. World and 3 are just two, two of the greatest games of all time. None mm-hmm. of the other collections have two of the greatest games of all time. I also, mean, you, World, oh, people could Portal. argue Portal and Half-Life 2. That's, see, you say no other collection has two of the greatest games of all time, but Orange Box has Half-Life 2 sure. and Portal. Portal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Orange Box is pretty spectacular. Though. I'm going to fess up. I, I, I love Half-Life 2, but... I barely touched it after I discovered Portal. Like I was like, "Wow, yeah. this is this is night and day." Uh, they're both incredible games, but Portal was just so good I couldn't put Portal it down. But good. going back to Mario All Stars, not only is it an example, uh, not only is it one of the earliest examples of a good compilation, uh, mm-hmm. and not only is it contained several of the best games ever made, uh, it's also a great example of a early remake that actually made games as good or better. Because remake. those games, yeah, those games were redecorated for the Super Nintendo, Super Mario. One, two, three, yeah. and Lost Levels were all updated to uh, to look and sound more like Super Nintendo yeah. games. And it's, usually, when you try to do that, you screw a game up. Instead, they produced superb versions of yeah. those games. I, I really do think that's that's kind of the gold standard by which these games can be yeah. measured. Now, I am interested. Mega Man Legacy Collections coming out, you know, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah and, I'm stoked so. And that 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 in addition this, to some really neat versions of games, we don't know how it's going to turn out yet, but we have seen a lot of the museum stuff that tries to contextualize mm-hmm. yeah. uh, some of the collected so stuff. Rare Replay did really good with that too. Yeah, I mean, Rare I, Replay it, is. I'm so impressed. Yeah, the sort that's of the window, the window dressing, and then the actual like in depth. Uh, you know, they, behind the scenes videos and everything. They went so far above and beyond for thirty games for thirty dollars. I was expecting here's thirty games, mm-hmm. but they the wrapping that it's in where they have you know NES remix style challenges where complete these mm-hmm. five you know little bite sized challenges and battle toads and whatever. The fact that in the retro games you can rewind at any time for the previous ten seconds and replay battle toads and actually get through it. Um, 
the the sort of uh, what would you call it like theater or like yeah the sort of yeah theatrical presentation yeah the presentation of it how it's all like this stage display with like curtains opening and closing like I wasn't expecting any of that that that's so yeah. above mm -hmm. and beyond like it opens with like a song and dance number mm -hmm. that's all about rare games like, also the first time you boot it up your house gets actually haunted by a ghoulie from yeah. Ragbelly yeah. Ghoulies yeah, yeah I got this ghoulie I can't get rid of I'm actually playing rare replays <laughs> you, you got a ghoulie you can't get rid of yeah rare replay in a lot of ways gets it as it does it about as well as, as some of the compilations by M2 and Japan. Japan, which really are kind of the gold standard for this sort of thing, where they provide every possible imaginable version of these games and, and, and details around those to explain what they meant. Rare Replay has a kind of TLC to yeah. a lot of what you see there. And uh, Waterfalls. I met, I met, I met uh, 800 Jiggies in Banjo-Kazooie. Congrats, man. How many are there total? 900. Oh, there you go. No, not 900 Jiggies. Or, excuse me, 900 notes. notes, yeah. 80 some notes. God, there are 900 Jiggies in that game? Uh, <laughs> I'd be dead. Also, uh, we didn't mention Metroid Prime Trilogy because Metroid Prime is the most overrated Nintendo game of all time. Oh! oh. There has to be a most overrated one, and it's that. Go, go. Is that the most overrated Nintendo game of all time? Yep. No. The answer yeah. is Donkey Kong Country. No, no there's nope. the Twilight yeah. Princess. No. Yeah. No. No, that, no, that's, that, is, that is factually untrue. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm tearing this family apart. I do want. I want. I was just telling Marty we were we were doing features on Metal Gear leading up to the release of Metal Gear Solid Five, and I only played Solid. I didn't play two, three, or four. Mm -hmm. And like, you just can't. I don't have a PS3 anymore, and so the, I literally can't. Buy you can't. They're not available for PS4. Nope. No. Mm. So it's like they re-released. What are they called? Well, I don't even remember what the collection's called. Uh, uh, Legacy collection. Yeah. Like they have Legacy collection on PS3. So it's like great. You can play these Metal Gear games you missed, but now that's not on PS4. You so can, like yeah. you just subscribe to PS now. But it just becomes strange when the re-releases are on one console back. Yeah. So it's like, do they need to be re-released again? Or like, I don't even know what the solution is. Like, it just annoys me that I can't play Metal Gear Solid Three. You, are, like, you can play you three, yeah. so right about that. I mean, there's a collection, the Taito's Memory Collection for the yeah, PS2. Exactly. Four volumes of some of the just most wonderful, difficult-to-find video games, all available, and you can't play them now. You right. just can't play them. Uh, in, unless you've got a PS3 with a PS2 emotion chip in it yeah. sticking around your house. It's, like, it's really frustrating. I'd love to see uh, just more collections in general. You know, yeah. I, I, like, why can't we get another edition of Mario All-Stars that includes... You know, Mario 64 and Galaxy, yeah. Galaxy Sunshine. 2, yeah. Sunshine. Mm -hmm. yep. Can you imagine? Yes. Because yeah, they'll, sell, they'll yes, sell them all for 10 or 15 bucks individually. That's why. <clears throat> yeah. All right, moving on. This is KB in Miami. Hi, KB. KB in Miami sounds like a weird morning show. Kilobyte. Welcome to KB in Miami. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. If I'm not mistaken, all of you own both a PS4 and Xbox One. That's correct. Is KB mistaken? Uh, KB's mistaken. I don't own an Xbox One. Mm -hmm. I just steal one from work when I want to play games. Mm -hmm. Classic fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> You said it on your phone. That's weird. Anyway, he <laughs> says... Why I stick it under here all the time? <laughs> PS4 already offers four free PlayStation Plus games monthly, and with the recent announcement that the two free XBL games with gold for the 360 will also be playable on the Xbox One with backwards compatibility, oh, yeah. that also makes four per month on Xbox One. Mm -hmm. with, with KB so far? Yep. That's a total of eight games a month, Completely eight free lost. games a month, if you have both systems, mm -hmm. not counting whatever you buy on top of that. So he wants to know how do we how do we make time? What, how do we choose what to play? He says my approach is to sample everything, but I legitimately don't have the time to play them all to completion. How do you guys choose? Do you put less value on the free games and thus don't feel bad about skipping a couple if they don't appeal to you right away? Mm. No, like I love that stuff. Right now I'm playing uh, Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris, nice. mm -hmm. and I'm playing Limbo again yep. because uh -huh. they're both free on PS4 yeah. this month. And then I've still got my big AAA Batman that I'm yeah, playing. Sure, here we go. KB, I think my opinion is that you're kind of overthinking it a little bit. Mm. Um, I have Arkham Knight, and maybe I should feel guilty about not playing it, but like I just play, like I'm, I want to play Banjo Kazooie, so I'm playing Banjo Kazooie. Does it matter that it's years old or that I've played it in the past? Like I go home and I have fun with that game every night, and like that's what I'm drawn to. Like my heart is saying Banjo Kazooie, and my rational brain might say, nah, play Batman instead, but it's like, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to play Batman. I think I'm done with Batman. Yeah, like, I've definitely, uh, I think in the, over the past few years, probably over the past five years, I've definitely got out of that mindset of like, I have to play everything to completion and yeah. I must play everything yeah. I own. And I'm like, no, I like, I've, we all have really limited free time. And so mm -hmm. just like play what appeals to us. And maybe that means replaying it. I'm replaying Sound Shapes and Limbo yeah. because they're both yeah. free on, on yeah. PlayStation Plus. Play Civ 5 so. for a thousand hours. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Play whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it for me is just, does it work on Vita? Um, yeah. It's a long bus commute there and back mm -hmm. uh, to work every day. And that was the original game of The Hobbit. Yeah, handheld gaming is where I can where I can do a lot of what mm -hmm. I get to do for fun now. Mm -hmm. So totally. if it's on a handheld, if it's on 3DS or it's on Vita, it's a lot more of a what chance I'm going to play it. 
Uh, this week, I'm playing stuff for review, so I'm not playing anything for fun. Uh, last right. week, I played stuff for review. It's been, it's been like three weeks since I played a game for fun. I, I read a I read a blog post recently where a guy's trying to read. It's one of those things where he's trying to read like fifty two books a year, just trying to read more. And he says one thing that he does is if he finds himself getting bored with a book or he's not enjoying it, um, he throws it across the room. Oh, okay. And I just thought it's just mentally to be like it's just kind of this like fuck this I don't need yeah. to spend one like this is my enjoyment time this is for me yeah. mm -hmm. like to say oh I'm just really trying to get suit through something like what motivates us it's, to do that just stop just it's well, that same like you get halfway through a show and you're like I just kinda, gotta keep watching that it. that was me in True Detective yeah. season two I was yeah. like well I've already watched the first half yeah, I guess like, I gotta yeah. do the second <laughs> half but that's what like I think throwing it across the room is meant to like break you out of like it feels good instead of just putting it down where you might feel guilty with like the bookmark what if you set it on fire. Yeah. yeah. Set it on fire it, and throw it at yeah. your baby. It's worth. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is worth giving unfamiliar things an effort if you feel like there might be something that you're going to care about. But sure. Yeah, there's you reach a point like, where you're just like, no. Look, if you are able to slog through the first fourth of this book, you'll find something incredible. Yeah. yeah like I respect that, but I'm yeah. just saying it's your leisure time. Don't feel like you have to get through something. Put like I'm. I'm done with Batman. I'm replaying Banjo, and I have no. Yeah. I have no guilt about that. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> No guilt about throwing that flame in book at my, at my baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Heads up. <laughs> yeah, toughen them up. Uh, it is amazing, though, isn't it, that if you have a PS4 and Xbox One, you get eight free games yeah. a month. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That's super cool. All right, before we go this week, it's time for Video Game 20 Questions. Uh, yeah, I forget every Don't forget. Week. It's coming for you. This is your uh, life now, Justin. Uh, every week, uh, this is your life. This is your punishment for throwing that fire book. Yeah. Our suggestion this week comes from Simon in the UK. So oh, Simon, you made. So it's, is, is, it like, is it like F one or like what? Are the, what are the, the, the cricket? Yeah, cricket, cricket simulator. FIFA? The FIFA. Yeah. yeah. Chucky, Chucky oh, egg. Are we being awful? Chucky could be, egg. Could be Chucky egg. Could be. It's a Tandy game, isn't it? Uh, no, it's not. That's a ZX Spectre. <laughs> Chucky egg. Yeah. That's a deep cut. Yeah. It's a pretty may, good game. You may begin the questioning. <laughs> is it Chucky, Chucky egg? egg? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that when you're is, no, no. is it? Uh, did it come out uh, after January first, two thousand? No. Okay. Uh, is it? Oh, let's see. Is it a console video game? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it primarily known for being on a Nintendo console? No. Okay. Primary, primarily known for being on a Sony console. Yes. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Um, so PS One. Yeah, it's got to be PS One. Oh, why, why does it got to be PS One? It's before two thousand. Oh, before two thousand. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's see. Is it a um, is it a platformer? It's in the family. It's not a platformer in the strictest sense, but there is platforming. Ape platforming. Escape. Okay, platforming. Um, I don't know why I whispered. Um, is it is it two D? No. Okay. Um, it's in the platform family. Uh, do you play as a human? Yes. yes. Okay, so you're a human protagonist. Uh, does the game? You're not a bandicoot. <laughs> does the game take bandicoot? place on Earth or some <laughs> video game facsimile of Earth that identifies itself in some way as Earth? I think so. Okay. So it's probably not historical or anything like that. Mm. Like... Now I'm a little bit lost. I don't okay. know what to ask. Human, some platforming, 3D. Is, is Ape Escape on Earth? <laughs> well, he didn't say 3D. Uh, well, he said not no, 2D. he said not 2D. So that would make it. Did we? That was my yeah, question. Yeah. That was his question. Mm. Uh -huh. I was too busy looking at that phone by your butt. All right. Uh, is it made by a company that's still in business? Yes. Oh, there you go. It's has to its first party. Oh, yeah, it was the first party? Yes. Ooh. That's, oh. that's 10. All right. It's first Ape Escape. <laughs> okay, Ape, where does Ape Escape take place? What facts well, will I mean, that would be like It's the Planet of the Apes. That would be Earthish. No, it could be, I'm thinking Siphon Filter. Ooh. It's not platformy. Gabe Logan probably jumps at one point in that game. <laughs> so. he, he hurdles over a low fence. It's a, it's a silly, silly guess. It's your question. Oh, we're doing, we're doing a nice, yeah, we're doing a nice order. Oh, oh I didn't order. know. I'm, you know what? Pass. Go to Justin. I, I think for a second. I got nothing. Um, I got nothing. Yeah, right. What was the last question? Uh, you play as a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah as a human. That. What was right. the last question? Sort of Earth. First party. First, first, party. first party. Yeah, it's first party game. Um, ooh. Okay. I don't know. I got nothing either. Uh, do you, uh, do you use good. guns? Uh, yeah. Not... Really? It's not, you, it's, it's, not a like game where, a, it's not a game where you're using guns all the time. Uh, it's right. not a, 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 a traditional video game. Do you capture apes in this game? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could have had it at six. Yeah. yeah. Six. It's, it's a, a donkey can. No, but wait, wait, wait. Is, it, is it a sequel? 
No. Is it uh, Ape Escape? Yes. Uh, Woo! Well done, Justin. Nice, Table 14. Over. Yeah. You could have. So that's, you, I think it's on Earth, right? I just couldn't, I didn't know if it was like in space. <laughs> I don't think that game's on Earth at all. No. What, was, was that the, uh, the, looks the like debut Earth. of Analog Control? Uh, the DualShock, yeah. Right? It was yeah. their game for the yeah. DualShock, right. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was literally the first one, but that was the first, I think it was. like... And, there, really? and you asked if there's a gun. There's probably like yeah, a, you got like, like a water gun. gun. Yeah, 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 yeah got something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ape Escape is real good. Ape Escape is one of the games I keep wanting to come back. I, I'm yeah. gonna fess up. I've never played Gay Ape Escape. I mean, still I know good. what it is, still but I've never played. Apes have not escaped yet. Yeah. Remember Cookies and Cream? Yeah, that was a that's weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I you used, that. It was a game where you used both analog six control two characters. I don't remember that one. They re-released like Resident Evil. They released the Resident Evil with dual analog controls. Remember, there was like there was like four versions of the first Resident Evil. Yeah, we're gonna do. We're gonna rank all the Resident Evil ones. Rank all the Resident Evil ones? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a lot of Resident Evil ones. That last one That's was true. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's all the scoops we have for this week. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Jared. Thank My you. name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.